Hi, I'm Bart Herbison, Executive Director of the Nashville Songwriters Association. And the story behind the song this week for the Nashville Tennessean, the song is Born Country, writer Mr. Byron Hill. And uh, you write it with John Schwears, who, if we started talking about what John wrote, we wouldn't have enough time on the interview. Oh, man. Well, John's a great writer. He's been around a long time and certainly is one of those writers that I looked uh, up to, you know, when I first moved to town. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we were writing for Tom Collins, uh, that, uh, Tom's publishing company, and I was signed there, and uh, we, we uh, wrote that song, I guess, about 1990, 91, okay. somewhere in there. What was the idea? Who brought in the idea? Let's talk about that day in the writing room. You know, I really can't remember because we, uh, exactly whose idea it was, but uh, uh, somehow we, uh, we just latched onto that and, and went with it, uh, and... You know, John, uh, John and I have written a lot through the years, and it seems like a lot of there's kind of a rural thread that mm -hmm. runs through some of the things that we write. I don't know if it has to do with uh, his upbringing or mine, but uh, uh, so Born Country was kind of right in our wheelhouse. We, uh, you know, we were that was our kind of thing. And uh, well, let's yeah. expand on that because you're from North Carolina, and you know, I got to tell you, I've, I've always loved that song in the sense that, and we'll talk about how it became an anthem for people and all that later, that would you agree, Byron, that's the kind of song that can be, with just a word or a line or two, not authentic, but that one was. Uh, it's possible. I, you know, there's been a lot of songs out there with that sort of a theme to it. It's kind of, you know, uh, I guess it was maybe one of the first I'm country kind of songs, you know, uh, but uh, it, it, uh, I don't know, it, it felt very authentic to me and, and it was coming from the heart. I mean, I grew up in the, in the rural side of the uh, area of the county in Winston-Salem, near Winston-Salem there. And, and uh, certainly John being a Texas boy, I know that he's, uh, uh, he grew up in the same similar kind of a setting maybe even even more rural than I did but uh, uh, we drew from our roots uh, you know for that and it, it certainly we didn't write it at a time when when that was a big trend at all uh, to uh, to a country anthem talking about your roots you know we just there wasn't a lot of that going on at the time it's since then become quite a quite a big deal Teddy Gentry of Alabama his his memory of the day he got that song from you and i've heard you tell your story yeah so right. i just think it's so cool and byron also before i'm going to get wordy here but before you answer i think there's a lesson to songwriters in this particularly in this time in the music industry because there was a day when creative spirits just depended on their song plugger you better empower yourself with every opportunity for cuts these days and to write with the artist you certainly did it on a morning after you wrote Born Country, what happened? Well, uh, I, I like to tell the story of, of writing for uh, Tom at the time, who was quite a taskmaster, Tom Collins, and he wanted his writers in there bright and early. And Born Country had already been written and demoed. Actually, uh, uh, Joe Diffie sang the demo on really? Born I Country. Still got that yeah, I sure do. Yeah. I'd love for you to hear it. It's, 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 uh, it really is cool. I mean, he sang the demo in about 10 minutes, you know, and Joe was fast. Uh, but uh, so I had uh, been carting that song around and uh, uh, trying to get it out there, uh, basically stalking you know people for <laughs> to try to get it to anyone I could. Uh, and the and my publisher had been working the song a lot too. Uh, but one day I was writing, uh, as a matter of fact, right across the street from the music mill. There used to be a house on the corner there, right across from RCA Studio B, uh, where Tom's offices were, and on the second. Uh, floor, a uh, little window overlooking the street. Uh, there was a magnolia tree out there, I, I remember. Might even still be there, but uh, I was uh, in that room writing uh, with a co-writer that day, and my co-writer looked out the window and he said, hey, there's Teddy Gentry from Alabama walking by, <laughs> you know. Well, I just, before my co-writer could turn around, I was, I was out the door, down the steps, out to my car, and I had the cassette in the car, and I ran out into the street and I gave it to Teddy. And uh, so I just, uh, I didn't know Teddy. You know, I'd, I'd met him a few times, but I really didn't know him. And, and so I gave him the, uh, the cassette, and he said he would listen to it. And it wasn't long after that they called and said they loved the song and that they were going to cut it. And then it seemed like it just, it, it was no time after that they called and said that they had cut it. 
And it just uh, all happened very fast. It made it on that uh, Greatest Hits 2 album, I think was the name of the album. It's a white album. Great cover. album for a songwriter to be on, too. Oh, yeah, it's because... Automatic sales. And the new yeah. song or two on a Greatest Hits, you, they're going to be the singles. Well, yeah, it usually works out that way. So uh, so anyway, uh, to the way I like to wrap up the story is that uh, I was in that little office bright and early every day, you know, doing exactly what Tom wanted his writers to do. I was there bright and early, had a cassette uh, in my car of something always, you know, ready to go, you know. So well, it being you. the lesson is being in the right place it at the right time, I persistent. guess. Now, his memory is a little more sinister in that he goes, <laughs> you know, songs that come to us in every way. He goes, one day, I was over here early, and I walked down the steps, and he goes, some guy in a trench coat <laughs> yeah, but... with his hands in his pocket ran up to me, and he goes, oh, I didn't... I don't know if the guy had a gun. I don't know, I don't know what he had. And he goes and he pulls out his <laughs> Well, he didn't tell you the part. He was wearing a fur coat <laughs> in I'm the saying, rain. I remember those pictures. <laughs> I'm going to remind Teddy of that. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to find that shot and put it in the documentary. Yeah. But he says, and, and sometimes you know when songs are meant to be, Byron, that that afternoon he and Randy had a flight. He yeah, I believe you're right. Yeah. You're right. He played it for Randy. Randy loved it. And it happened very quickly. Yeah, it, it really did. So, and uh, uh, were you over here when they recorded it at the music? Band? No, no, you I, I the didn't. First time you heard the cut? Oh my gosh! Well, because I think they nailed. Well, that you know, our song. our demo on it was quite uh, simple and kind of a little more just basic kind of a, a roadmap for the song. But uh, uh, but Josh Leo and uh, Michael Lee, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they they did that that. Uh, uh, produced that and it was like wow it was an amazing uh it just uh, sort of went to another place you know i just remember the sort of they had this sort of string background in in a couple of spots in there that just took it somewhere else it was really good so. well and i think that it became in the same way farm aid kind of became a sense of pride for the american farmer not necessarily farmer but working man but rural rural sensibilities and i think again as we said earlier there could have been a danger it could have been with just a word or two instead of uplifting condescending but you guys nailed the exact verbiage the imagery byron to me i know a song's a hit when i first hear it and i remember this all those years ago when i heard it i could see the video in yeah. my mind cool and uh you've had to have heard from the people where you grew up and people oh, yeah. from rural America, a, a reflection of pride bouncing from that song. Oh, yeah. I just uh, I was just up in uh, Murray, Kentucky at Murray State University last night and played it. And it gets uh, the same reaction every time. There's a little bit of a, of a patriotic element yeah, patriotic. in that song that uh, people seem to love. And it, um, I, I don't know, it touches a lot of things. It touches the... Uh, the rural thing, and I always set it up a little, a little bit. You know, I don't really. That song appeals to so, so many people. You don't have to be born country to like that song. You know, but if you, it, you know, it, but if you have a love for the country and and, and you love uh, country music and, and things, the, the song just sort of has a way of crossing all those boundaries. You don't really have to have been, uh, you know, born out in the sticks to like it. You know, and so, and. It just uh, it just has a, a pretty cool appeal. People almost you can almost feel it when I play it in in the room. It almost feels like people want to do a standing ovation. It's just it's a strange feeling. So let's hear a verse in the chorus of this week for the Nashville Tennessee and the song written by Mr. Byron Hill and John Schwears, Born Country. Okay. Clear creeks and cool mountain mornings, honest work out in the fields, cornbread in my mama's kitchen, daddy's saying grace before the meals, family ties run deep in this land, and I'm never very far what I am, I was born country, that's what I'll always be. 